I think we already touched on it there that clubs need to understand what matters to uh, in girls' lives and what's important to them. And I think we'll we'll really delve into this now because as girls' interests and levels of maturity change and differ between 11 to 16 years, clubs need to adapt and understand their needs as well. So the five anchors that you can see on your screen now, uh, they cover these things, the support network. I, I was very, I'm a very lucky athlete. I have a great support network and system and I did through this age group as well my dad is my coach so a lot of people might think oh god that sounds terrible but for me that was a really nice support network and and allowed me to feel comfortable through those years of sort of my teenage years um for girls staying socially connected independence and providing new experiences having moments of pride that sort of fuel self-worth and keeping on top of it all so these are all the five and that um that have been created now dan maybe you could talk us through what canton liberal fc are doing to engage girls and how you continue the success that you've had over the years as well well thanks for asking and thanks for having me i'm, I'm you know really chuffed to be here um loving the input that we've had so far today you talked about a, a daddy daughter relationship just a moment ago mika and and you know i'm i'm fully aware of that and we have a number of examples of that in how our girls' programme started. Um, it was dads bringing their girls along to football, and it, it really fl flourished from there. Um, you know, those, those networks that you talk about as well. Girls, you know, I tried taking my daughters to boys' football um, because it was football. Um, it, it, the penny didn't drop. It didn't work for them. What worked was seeing other girls playing and enjoying football, and that's what's encouraged the participation that we've seen, you know, throughout our community, from ages of, of little four-year-olds, love them, you know, up to as old as, you know, 13, 14. Um, and, and I really believe that when you, when you ask the players, you know, why do they come? Um, what, what do they want to do? They're genuinely there to, to enjoy, but also to be better. They want to know how to be better and how they can tell the ball to go from A to B. And, and I'm sure that relates to other sports as well. Um, and creating an environment that is safe is key. Um, certainly we want to make sure that the girls feel comfortable because you have girls of all ages, all different backgrounds and making sure that there's no pressure on them whatsoever, that simply by joining in for as little or as long as they can do, we're absolutely thrilled with that and we really celebrate it. Um, I think the key thing for us is volunteers, Mika. How can we keep our volunteers and grow our volunteer base? Because as numbers grow, we need more hands on deck. And I want to pick up on something that I think it was Laura and Lowry kind of came across in terms of females that get involved in coaching, if you like. Maybe they played the game before. Well, well Laura gave a great example then about nans, aunties and mums. How can we get maybe those um, people involved that maybe haven't experienced football before, but want to participate, want to contribute, but aren't intimidated, if you like, by its football? Don't worry about your previous knowledge, your previous experience. If you're prepared to encourage, facilitate, organise, put yourself out there like we're asking the players to do then i think they've got a great chance at doing well for these girls and making them feel even more comfortable so we're certainly trying our best Mika, and we'll continue to do that yeah and i think that's a fantastic approach as well dan just taking the sort of worry of knowledge out of it but just having that enthusiasm for fun and learning and sport and keeping everybody engaged um Amy, I'll, I'll come to you as well. Do you, have you got anything to sort of touch upon there in terms of engagement with girls in sport? Absolutely. So um, it's one thing we talk about when we partner with a football club. It's like, how can we engage like the local community? Like how, what can we do to kind of get young girls in? And with some clubs, we've been lucky enough to, that they've offered, um, so Bristol City, for example, we did a double header weekend. So we had the men's team play on the Saturday and the female team play on the Sunday. And for across the whole weekend, they gave out, I think they gave out up to, I think it was about 850 free tickets to kind of like local girls schools, girls sports clubs, things like that. And it's so small, but it allowed like some girls who may not be able to afford to go, maybe they don't have family who like to go to the football. It allowed them to go and see men and women play football over the weekend with their friends and something they enjoyed. We had amazing feedback back from that. And, you know, for a club like Bristol City, it wasn't too much of a, a you know, a, a problem for them to do, but it, we've heard some great things back from like the local grassroots teams that went and things like that that the girls were really inspired and they wanted to go back and it's something just as small as that just opening the eyes to to what that can offer you and um yeah feeling kind of engaged in the sport then 